Hi guys, welcome to a new knitting podcast or welcome back if you've been here, welcome if you're new. My name is Claudia and I like all things knitting related and I make knitting podcasts just to chat, just to ramble a lot about my knitting. Um, I'm 31, I live in the Netherlands and I found knitting during one of the lockdowns a year and a half or two years ago. And I've been yeah, obsessed ever since. I knit quite a lot. I'm not a really fast knitter, I must say. Uh, when I work on a project, I'm not really fast, but I knit a lot. Um, I, it's just my favorite thing to do. And so all my free time goes to knitting if I can. Uh, and right now I'm at home sick uh, with burnout symptoms. I'm not gonna talk about that this uh, episode, um, but yeah, I knit a lot and of course, maybe you uh, recognize that, but when you knit a lot, you like to talk about knitting a lot. So I talk a lot uh, to my boyfriend about my knitting and every time he shows me a little bit of interest in, hey, what are you making? Uh, yeah, I just ramble on about everything and I can see in his eyes like, oh, I shouldn't have asked that. So. Here I am making my podcast videos so I can ramble along uh, as much as I want. And I've got a lot to show you today. Um, my last podcast I filmed at the end of February and I just checked. It's a little bit over three weeks ago. Normally I film my videos uh, with like every two, two and a half weeks. But now it's a little bit longer and it's, it's showing in what I have on my needles and what I have finished. Because I have five finished objects and one of which I fortunately I can't show you. I've got four whips and I've got some new stuff, yarn, a book um, and something else. Uh, so if you're interested, just keep on watching. And just to get it out of the way, my first finished object that I unfortunately can't show you is the Moby sweater. The Moby sweater man I'm making uh, of have made for my boyfriend. Uh, and it's because he's wearing it right now and he's out of the house. So too bad. Um, and I really want to finish this today, uh, right now <laughs> when I'm home alone. Um, so I'll show that sweater next time uh, in the next podcast and I'll go in depth and tell you all about the knitting process. But for now, I'll uh, put a photo in the screen so you can see at least how it uh, fits him because it's really beautiful and I already got a lot of compliments on it. So yeah. And this means I can go to my next finished objects. And these are all quite small projects. Firstly, I've got my first pair of socks finished. And I showed you the first one already. That's this one. Uh, and last time I was about, I think, halfway through the leg. And I wasn't feeling it pretty much the knitting. Now I've got two. Um, but yeah, for me, socks are i really like to knit socks it's really fun but it's not like the main project i want to work on when i sit on the couch i'm watching uh, Grey's anatomy at the moment then i want something bigger like yeah a garment like my monday sweater for example um, and socks for me are like excuse me uh, the project i bring with me when i'm out and about which is not all that often at the moment. So it was a bit slow, the second sock. But in the end, I got there because when I decided I wanted to knit, it was like two days and it was finished. Oh, I've got yarn fluff. So as you can see, the two socks are a little bit different in color. Um, that's because I'm new, I've used uh, hand-dyed yarn by Lana Grossa, the Meilenwijd. Merino, jam, hand dyed yarn. I don't know the color. Maybe I can look it up. But 
The color is called Dangal. Dangal? Don't know. Um, but I've used two different skeins, two different dye baths, because I got them at the sale at my local yarn store. And I don't think they uh, really mind the dye bath. So the first one is a lot more blue, as you can see in the background, than the second one. But the blue specks pop a lot more. And that's not the only difference. Um, I knitted these at a needle size 275, uh, tiny circular needles, which worked really fine. And I like the fabric it's created. It's really nice. And this yarn is really soft. Um, but I'm a quite a tight knitter. And recently I'm trying to get a little bit looser. Um, just because it's better for my hands, my fingers, my wrists, etc. Um, so yeah, this was my first sock. And then second sock, this is a little bit tighter. And then I knitted quite a lot looser. Um, and the gauge changed quite a lot. And I don't know if I can show you. Maybe if I put the first one on the bottom. You can see it's a little bit wider here. And also on the foot. And when I uh, wear these, I can feel that the one is a little bit more snug than the other. But I don't mind. They're for myself. I think I will wear these just at home. Um, so yeah, I've worn them already like two times maybe, three times. And they're just a little bit more... I don't know if the camera picks it up. Uh, fluffy. You can see that I've worn it. It fluffs up already, but I don't mind. Um, if something really special happens with this uh, yarn, I'll tell you, I'll update you. But yeah, my first finished socks. I'm really happy with them, and I really want to make another pair. And uh, the skeins I used are, um, they say it's 50 gram each, but it's more like 55 grams each. And I've weighed this morning, and... Each pair of socks is 30 grams. So I've got two cute mini skeins left. And as you can see, the fade that's in this yarn is from the purple to this really beautiful dark blue teal color. Um, and that teal didn't end up in this sock except for the speckles. And I'm really sad about that. So what I was thinking, because these are both 22 grams, is that I'll make... Short socks. I think that will be possible because my teeth, my feet are really tiny. So I think if I start like maybe here, like ankle high, maybe I can get some socks out of these two skeins. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say. Oh, the pattern I used, maybe you can see that already, is uh, simple vanilla socks. I used the um, pattern and... Uh, instruction video from uh, the crazy sock lady because she explains everything so well and uh, this was my first pair so it's uh, like a reinforced slip stitch heel don't know a lot about socks yet so yeah also by the way I'll uh, link or I'll Write down every uh, yarn I used and the patterns that I use. So you can look that up in the description box. And um, then about two weeks ago, my boyfriend and I um, decided to go on a trip. And we're leaving in two weeks. So it's quite spontaneous and really uh, fast that we're going. And we're going to Scotland. I'm really excited about that. Um, it's just, it's been a while since we've had like a more adventurous holiday, just two of us. Um, we've been to like the beach in Spain uh, past summers, but we're, we like to go to South, Southeast Asia, like Thailand, for example. And that, because of COVID, hasn't happened uh, a long time. And I feel like uh, we should get out a little bit more and go to the nature um, leave our little yeah, home, our little bubble where we're in. Uh, and I just 
thought about what I want to see, like green, nature. Uh, so yeah, we're going to Scotland. And we're leaving really soon, as I said. And um, yeah, the weather in April, because it's April then, um, isn't all that great in Scotland, probably. I hope it doesn't rain like the whole day all that much. But I'm expecting rain. I'm expecting a lot of wind and I'm expecting some cold because uh, we rented a camper van. So we're going to make a road trip. I think it will be a little bit chilly. So what do you do as a knitter? Well, uh, you make accessories. And these are the first accessories that I ever knitted because I, yeah, except for scarves. But I mostly knit sweaters or maybe a cardigan and tops. But I have some accessories to show you. The first one is a really simple. This is the Weekend Headband by Petite Knit. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Petite Knit today. And I really like this pattern. I haven't blocked this yet. Uh, it doesn't really need it, I think. The yarn that I used is Drops Lima, and it was a color I had in my stash already. And actually this yarn I used for my first ever garment that I made. Um, so yeah, it's quite fun to have a little bit left over for this. Um, I used exactly one skein, so 50 grams. And I really like the construction of this. Um, you could imagine like how why do you need a pattern of this or maybe there's a good free pattern on Ravelry uh, but the construction is quite neat and like my sewing the the Kirchner stitch this is the inside isn't all that neat but in theory you shouldn't see like a, a seam here but I didn't do that quite neat but I mind so yeah, just to keep my ears, my head a little bit warm. I really like this color and I think it will suit my um, rain jacket quite well. Um, yeah, I used needle size 3.5 just as the pattern said. And I must say it's really stretchy, so it's really comfortable right now. But I could have made a size smaller, I think. I made size medium. Did I say that right? I'm going to check my knitting journal. Yes, I made a size medium. Um, just according to, uh, like I measured my head. And it should be a medium, but I feel it's a little bit loose. It could have been a little bit more snug because it's really, really stretchy. But yeah, it's really also quite squishy. I really like that. So, would recommend this pattern. Definitely. Um, the next, I made a hat. Just to keep my hat a little bit more toasty. And I've made the Oslo hat by putting it as well. In a stunning like dusty pink color. And it fits me really well. So yeah, this is one of my favorite colors. And as you guys know, uh, when you've seen me before, I love pink. Pink is my favorite color and I just want to knit everything pink. Although I'm kind of going through a, a blue phase and mostly dark blue. And as you can see, blue really suits my eye color. But I like this soft pink and uh, it complements all the other things as well. Um, so the yarn that I used is Concept by Katia Mohair Cotton. I don't know if you can read that or if it's reverse. I don't know. Um, but this is 70% cotton and 30% mohair. Which is quite funny because 
I normally hate mohair, how it feels. It's really itchy if I wear mohair like uh, around my neck or uh, like the bust area. So I want to stop using mohair in sweaters just for the time being. Um, but my friend, knitting friend Heike used this yarn uh, for a Sophie shawl, I believe. And she bought it in a sale at my local yarn store. So I was influenced and I got some yarn as well. And this hat doesn't itch at all. So I'm really glad about that because it, now it has like this beautiful fluff around it. Um, and according to the pattern, um, I needed like 150 grams, 100 to 150, but I used only 80 grams. So this is what I have left of my two skeins that I used because I held it double. So I've just a little bit left and I bought a third one because the pattern said I needed it, but I obviously didn't need it at all. So maybe I can make another half with this. Not sure yet, because the yarn is beautiful, but uh, I'm afraid if I make like a little scarf with this, it will be too itchy for me. Yes, it will be too itchy. So funnily enough, it's not itchy here around my forehead. Um, well, what I did, um, the band I made a little bit smaller. Um, and also I started knitting this in a size medium, I think, because the pattern said uh, according to the measurements that I need to, needed to make a medium, but that felt really big immediately. So after like a couple of centimeters, I took it out and started again with the size small. And I'm really happy with that because now it's just feeling nice and a little bit snug. Um, but I made the border a little bit smaller because I think it needed to be this and I made the rest of the head uh, also smaller because I don't like it when it's uh, too roomy up here and you have all this uh, like fabric squishing around and also thinking about uh, wearing this um, in Scotland in the rain maybe uh, I want to have my uh, the hood of my coat over it so yeah, when I must say, when I feel myself touching this, it, it, it's getting a little bit itchy. But yeah, and also um, my gauge changed with this as well. So around this brim, it's quite a bit bigger than, for example, under here. But don't care, don't matter. Uh, it still needs a block, but I really wanted to show you this uh, today. I finished this yesterday and I believe I knitted this in less than a week. And the headband, by the way, I knitted in two days. So one weekend, it was really addictive knitting this and this as well. Um, so yeah, just some small modifications. Otherwise, I used uh, needle size 3.5. I'm really, really happy with this. And I would make this pattern again, definitely. Uh, also for other people, but also for myself. It's just that I don't wear hats all that often. It's a cheap bit. Um, because I qu I'm quite a warm person, I can have it really cold and um, snuggle up on a couch with my um, blankets and my tea and my water bottle. I really like that because I can be quite cold, but when I'm outside and I'm walking and I'm active, I get hot really easily. So don't expect to wear this every day in Scotland or next winter for that matter, because it's so gorgeous. I'm going to keep it, of course, just for the winter. Um, but it's not that often that I'm really cold when I'm walking outside here in the Netherlands. Uh, just when it snows. But then again, when I'm walking for about 10 to 15 minutes, I get hot. And I need to take it off. So, yeah. Finished object number four. And then lastly, 
as part of the accessories that I already finished. Hint, hint, I have some on the way. Um, are these cute little mittens. So I will show you. This one is a little bit neater. Um, these are the arched gusset mittens by Pearl Soho. This is a free pattern. Um, and I was inspired by um, Emily from High Fiber Knits. You should follow her if you don't already. Um, and that she, words are difficult. Um, she made these mittens as well because the uh, pattern is actually for like um, mittens that are, go all over your fingers. And she made them fingerless and I did as well. For the same reason as I just told you, I get hot quite easily. I have always warm hands. Like if my hands are cold, I'm really cold. Um, so yeah, I really like this gusset increase. It shapes it really beautiful. I also added the ribbing. Pattern doesn't call for that. It is a free pattern, so you can modify it as well. I did eight rows of ribbing one by one. Then I believe eight rows of normal stockinette stitch. Then the gusset according to the pattern. Um, and I think here are like two rows of stockinette and then five rows of ribbing. And the thumb has five rows as well. And the left one, I don't know what happened, but it has a little bubble here. It's like too much fabric. And I can't figure out why. Um, but maybe when I block this, it will go away. But I don't care all that much, to be honest, because when I wear it, you can't see it. These are the front, and then you have the back with the nice gusset. So this left one, as you can see, it's not visible anymore. They're really cute. Um, they're nice and warm. I made them quite short, as you can see, because I don't like it when um, like a mitten goes too far up my, my pinky. So if I can pull this down a little bit, um, but I don't like this feeling. So. I think I made them perfect from what I like. I still need uh, to block these and I think they will grow a little bit because the yarn that I used is Superwash. It is Lana Crossa Cool Wool Big in this nice neutral, is this, is this taupe? It's like gray brown, I don't know. Uh, normally I wouldn't go for this kind of neutral. But um, I have a coat that's like, it has peach and it has a little bit pink. I have these head accessories. Um, I also have a raincoat in bright yellow. Um, so I thought this suits everything. So I can't wait uh, to wear these. And I'm really excited to see if I will wear these. Me as a warm handed person. But I'll keep you updated. Also on um, how the yarn does as well, because this will wear, obviously. And as I said, the yarn is a superwash, superwash merino, 100%. And I also bought way too much of this, because this is what I have left of one skein. So this was... Together it's 30 grams, I believe, so I have 20 left. And then I have another skein. But um, these knitted up so quick, so incredibly fast. It was really fun to make and I was amazed by myself. Because I normally don't use DPNs, I did for this. I used, by the way, uh, 3.75 DPNs. And I made the first one in like two hours. Like, what? And of course, it's really small. It's simple. It's quite a large uh, yarn and gauge. But four hours for a pair of mittens, I think is a good score. And I think is a really great 
gift knit. So I'm saving the yarn for maybe like my sister or a friend because this is really fast to make. Way faster than I had to be honest and I like this a lot. So yeah, this, uh, that were all my finished objects. I can feel it in my, uh, my voice, in my throat a little bit. So I'm gonna have a tea break before I jump in to the whips. And I need to try on stuff or want to try on. What's funny to me is that, and I have talked about this, I think in almost every knitting podcast I made, is that I'm really excited about spring and summer knitting. And I'm done with this winter. It's raining today. And I just want some, I don't want spring. And what am I doing? I'm knitting, knitting winter knits. So it's really funny to me how my brain works sometimes. But I've been obsessively knitting these accessories. And... Yeah, I can, came to the realization that I really like these small projects, not only just like sweaters that take a really long time, but these small projects really like them. Um, my bigger projects, yeah, I prioritize less, of course, otherwise I couldn't have made all these accessories in like a week. But yeah. So I have four whips to show you and I'm going to start with the smallest two. Um, firstly, another weekend headband is in the making. I casted it on well, like, like two hours ago um, because I had this yarn. So this is just the start. I looks like a mess. Um, I have stitches on hold and I started the ribbing and as you can see it's a beautiful blue color um, and the yarn that I'm using this one is the main and this is also Lana Grossa uh, cool big but this is melange so I don't know if you can see it, but it has dark blue, but also a little bit of purple in this. I got this in the sale. And at the same time, I got this other yarn, this fluffy. Um, I have the label here. This Lang Yarns, Suri Alpaca. Suri Alpaca. Um, so this is 100% Alpaca wool. And it's quite thick, as you can see. It's not mohair, but it has the fluff. And because 25 grams is 100 meters, so this is thick. So I'm expecting this yarn combo to be even more squishier. That's not right English. Even more squishy or squishier uh, than this headband because this is just one strand of drops Lima. But I like the yarn combo. And it will stretch out a lot, as you can see. And I really like dark blue. And just thinking about like taking pictures and being all like sweaty and, and run down from hiking. But with my blue eyes, a blue headband, I think that will be a success. So yeah, not much to show you. But next time this will be finished because it probably will be finished like tomorrow or in a couple of days. So that's the first. Uh, next, my other color, oh you couldn't see it, is a sock. Wow, the color pops in on screen even more than in real life. This is a pink ribbed sock. I'm using the pattern from Petite Knit, the Sunday socks. And this is a um, DK weight sock, so uh, I'm using needle size 4. 
it's quite a bit thicker um, but yeah this is really stretchy and this yarn is not as soft as the other one this is a little bit rougher um, i'm just past the heel my gusset um, so yeah i really liked knitting socks and i wanted to make some thicker ones for myself for at home and i made them quite long not as long as the pattern set but i probably will uh, fold them over i like that with my socks and then the band from my uh, sweatpants goes right across on top of this so yeah huge game this is lana grossa meilenwijd merino i think six fuck Sexfach. Don't know how you pronounce that, but you can check in the description box. Um, I believe this is 150 grams for like 400 meters. I'm not sure. But yeah, I really like knitting this. And this tool was something I casted it on. I uh, was really excited because like, hot pink. Um, but then it got a little bit boring and it was my project for on the go. So I got stuck around here for quite some time. And then this Saturday, my boyfriend and I uh, went to Utrecht. I uh, picked up new glasses, needed some um, outdoor pants. Uh, and I needed quite a lot in the car. So I needed like a whole section and then uh, at home. Yeah, at home I went further with this. So now I'm here and now it just lays in my basket because I want to make a headband, a head mittens. Well, but just some slow project. I like it really a lot. Then, uh, what do I want to show you? I'll start with my Monday sweater this has been uh, i've shown you this in a previous podcast i don't know if i've shown you it in the podcast previous to that i'm not working on this for super long but this is the status and as you can see the body is finished i've done the rip and i'm almost done with my first sleeve so this is the monday sweater by petite knit and i'm using a hand dyed yarn i bought at uh, the handwerk beurs in zwolle and i'm using three skeins at the same time because it's hand dyed yarn it's um, advisable to alternate the skeins but um, I really fell in love with color and I they only had two skeins of the same dye bath and that dye bath was the like the most beautiful one so I bought one skein from a different dye bath so I'm alternating all three skeins that's a little bit of a hassle sometimes to be honest but the result is so so stunning the colors are beautiful And this is what I have left of the yarn. I have enough, more than enough. So as you can see, one skein is way more red. And I really like this purpley, pink, plummy color a lot more. More the pink side than the red side. But I like the overall color. Um, so I have three skeins. This yarn is Abmeska. Uh, and it's a hand dyed yarn from Lithuania. This is, uh, I have to say this correctly, merino with silk. If I say correctly, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, 75% superwash merino and 25% silk. So this yarn is super smooth. It's, it's really lovely and the pattern calls for, uh, I believe, fingering weight with uh, mohair and I'm 
don't use mohair, as I said. So my gauge is a little bit looser. I knit this at uh, needle size 4. I don't know if you can see. Hey, you can see through it. It is a little bit looser. Uh, but that makes it, I think, a perfect transitional piece or like going to spring and, and um, fall later. And otherwise I should layer it up. But yeah, I'm going to put this on for you so I can show how it looks. So yeah, this is the sweater on. As you can see, the color is really stunning. It suits me really well. Uh, I like the neckline. I made it a little bit higher than the pattern says. Because I like this to be snug and I can have my necklace on top of this. It's a simple raglan construction with, um, I believe, three stitches in the raglan. And I made it difficult to see when you're on the ground. Um, I made it quite cropped, like my belly button is wearing sweatpants uh, over here. So I just started the ribbing and this is 9 centimeters ribbing. And I will wear this inside my uh, jeans. So yeah, this is what it looks like. And then the sleeve is quite loose fitting. Dus, um, didn't say that uh, this video, but because my gauge is already a little bit loose, but I don't use the mohair, so my gauge is off. Um, it's too small, so I'm making a size extra large, or I'm uh, using the instructions for an extra large, and I'm hoping it will turn out like a small medium. I think more of a medium, um, but that's just really fine. The sweater has a lot of positive ease, uh, but I like my clothing to be a little bit more oversized, a little bit looser uh, and roomier. So as you can see, the armhole is quite deep. Um, and that makes the sleeve loose as well, but that's just a really relaxed fit. Uh, so yeah, you can see all my decreases and I start the ribbing around here. It looks quite high up, but it needs 12 centimeters of ribbing. Um, and because this is superwash, I'm counting on it uh, to grow even a little bit. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, if I prioritize this sleeve a little bit, it will be finished like tomorrow or next day. And to be honest, I want this have to have this finished before I leave to Scotland so I can wear it when I'm back um, because hopefully the weather will be nicer again, a little bit warmer and it will be the perfect uh, temperature for this sweater because it's wool, it is a little bit warm but this is not a sweater for like when it's really cold outside. So yeah. So yeah, that's my uh, Monday sweater so far. I think it will be finished next time. Don't hold me to it, but I just hope it is. And I'm keeping this on just for now so I can show you my other whip. I can try this on as well. Um, and that is... A blue. I'm alternating pinks and blues. Uh, champagne cardigan by Petite Knit. All those yarn strands. Um, let's see. This is a new whip. I haven't shown you this before. And this is where I'm at. So this is my first card, top-down cardigan, and it's a raglan. I don't know if you can see this. A little bit here. In the back. 
and I really like the look of that pattern. It looks so classy and effortless, but still modern and casual. So just what I like. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Novita Woolly Wood. And this uh, is 70% Tencel and 30% Merino. So it's quite a um, cool fabric and more suitable for summer, I think. Because Tencel is uh, recycled from bamboo, I believe. And this yarn is quite thick as you can see and it's more like a, a sort of chain i don't think the camera will uh, focus it enough but yeah for me this is um, a cardigan although it's like a dark color this can be worn all year round and that's my intention with it at least that uh, it is a lighter fabric at least to the touch i think it will be a heavy garment nonetheless um, but it's a little bit lighter, so I can wear this on top of like a skirt or um, a summer dress or like when I'm wearing jeans and t-shirts more in summertime, but also in wintertime. And I'm going to try this on for you so you can see how it looks. Um, yeah, let's do that first. So this is what I have so far. As you can see, I went just split for sleeves and I've knitted like two centimeters, I think. Um, and this, this went by really quick uh, to the point where I was almost to splitting the sleeves because the pearl rows were getting so, so long. There were like more than 300 stitches on this. Um, so yeah, I'm dreading it a little bit. Because of the purling, because although I don't mind the purling all that much, but I mind that um, every row takes me like 15 minutes. And then I don't pick it up all that much. So yeah, you can see the raglan here. Um, with this as well, my gauge is off. I believe it is a little bit smaller, but I like the fabric it gives me with... Um, needle size 4 it should be knitted with size uh, needle size 4.5 according to the pattern um, but it's a little bit smaller not that much um, and this pattern calls for a positive ease of 28 centimeters which is so much so i'm knitting a size medium um, normally when i uh, look at the size guide um, then I should knit a size large for most brands, not only just petite knit, because my um, chest circumference is 100 centimeters. So I'm usually be between two sizes or just in the large size, sometimes even extra large, with, which sounds crazy to me um, because I don't feel like an extra large. Um, and most of the time I stick to what the pattern says. If it says I need to make a size large, I usually do that because um, the design is intended to be like oversized or um, a certain way. And I stick to that. But sometimes um, I'm, I'm struggling with that a little bit. But sometimes it just turned out to be a little bit too big. Um, or it grows, the knitting uh, project grows with washing, I mean. So yeah, I'm making a size medium. I feel like it fits a little bit too snug, to be honest. But uh, there will be a double knitted button, button band as well. So then I think it will be okay. Um, and I'm making it cropped, by the way. As I make all my sweaters because my torso is really short. Um, and my waist is really high up, so I um, think I will make this quite 
cropped, but I like my cardigans like this to be oversized and, and cropped. And that makes it fun and more modern, I think. And I should take it off so I can show you something with the fabric. I'm not too happy with the tension I'm having. Normally I knit quite neat. It depends on the yarn that I'm using, um, the um, heaviness of the gauge or like how uh, compact it is. But with this I can see, maybe I don't know if you can see it, but I can see where the knit rows are and the purl rows. And the purl rows are tighter than the knit rows. So it's hard for me to, um, or is it the opposite? I think it's the opposite that my knit rows are tighter. I don't know, but um, it's like almost striped. Uh, but I think blocking it will uh, even that out. But for now, it's just, it's bothering me. I don't think when I wear this, it will bother someone else. But hey, if you're spending all these hours on this, you want to make it as perfect as you can. Or maybe like when you're happy. To the point you're happy with it. I'm not a perfectionist knitter, to be honest. So yeah, this is my last whip. Um, and as I said, the weekend headband will be finished soon. I hope the Monday sweater will be finished in the next two weeks. And I want to keep working on this. Not every day, but a couple of days a week. So this will slowly, steady, will be finished in end of april beginning of may that would be nice so i can wear this soon because it's gonna be pretty um yeah and i'm gonna have uh, a sip of tea and then we're going to acquisitions and this podcast is quite a lot longer than my usual podcast but that's fun it's just that i can feel I'm a teacher by the way so uh, normally when I teach like six different or, or seven maybe hours a day I talk a lot and my voice gets used to that but when we have like uh, the summer break or, um, then we all come back and we have to get used to talking <laughs> that much that is how I feel right now um, and I drink a lot of tea tea is just my drink of choice when I'm at home and even for myself I set a whole pot this is cup number three there are four in this so I think after the podcast is finished it will be <laughs> done or I'm gonna pour my last cup as a uh, to relax after this um, yes new things I have really different things to show you and firstly is something that i bought myself um, which is not yarn but it is knitting related i have told you i have a knitting journal this is by the way a bullet journal from uh, the hema for the dutchies and i make notes like this page for my vanilla socks and i say what the pattern is by whom what size I make, what the needle sizes that I use, the yarn that I use, all those notes. It is not a journal for me uh, that I use while knitting. All my um, notes or when I'm uh, counting, I do on the pattern itself because I print those out. I really like that and not to have it on my phone. So this is more a keepsake uh, for me for when I have things finished and I note when I started this and when I finished this. Not always I remember to fill that in so I forget when I started this. Uh, but just for me for fun. But it's a little bit bland this um, knitting journal. It's, it's black and white mostly. Don't use a lot of color although sometimes I like to use markers. So these are some patterns I plan on knitting. 
And to help that, I thought I would uh, print out some photos from like my Instagram or something uh, from all my projects and I can uh, put those in there so I can have photos here as well. Um, for me, my Instagram page is like kind of my diary, uh, like my progress. I mean, it's called Knitted Journey, like my journey with knitting and what I make. Sometimes it's a whip, sometimes it's a finished object, new yarn. Um, but I like things analog as well. Um, and when I printed some photos out, I didn't like the quality of it just because it was a normal paper. And then I was searching for like um, printing out photos in like a, a service. Uh, in the Netherlands, you have the HEMA, for example. Uh, they have, um, you, you can order the, the printed out pictures as well. And there I saw that you can make stickers. So I have three pages of stickers. Um, so these are the biggest one. I made a selection of my own photos I had on my phone or my Instagram. I've got these, these as well, and then a smaller sheet. Um, so I can put them in my knitting journal. And I really like this idea. And the quality is at least it's better than when I printed it out myself. It's not always that great, but hey, um, when you make a picture in the dark with your front camera, you can't expect too much like this one. But I like it. It's just for me, for just for me. But I thought it was a good idea. So if you want to try it and you're from the Netherlands, Hema, super fun. So this is the first one. Um, then, really fun, I have some yarn, I'm keeping that for last. Um, I got a book, because um, at the school where I work, uh, every year for like, we get a Christmas gift. I don't know if that's uh, normal in other countries as well, but uh, in the Netherlands it's normal to from your uh, employer to get like a, a box with stuff. Uh, just before Christmas, um, and at my uh, employer, it's normal to get a book, and you can choose a book for 25 euros, and um, you can give two options. And um, I wasn't able to uh, pick it up before Christmas, and after Christmas, I fell out and got home sick. So I just got this like a couple of days ago, and I want to show you because. It's knitting related. It is Harry Potter, Harry Potter, uh, Magisch Breien. It is a Dutch book, but it says uh, magical knitting. So yeah, it's super cute. I'm a really big Harry Potter fan. I'm listening to the audiobook, um, the fourth book, The Vuurbeker, what it's called in English, uh, Goblet of Fire. And I like the movies and uh, yeah, I was, my first choice was an illustrated Harry Potter book, like uh, The Chamber of Secrets. And this was some second option, and I'm still really happy with this. So as you can see, uh, there's a pattern for, um, like, Hedwig and a Cornish Pixie. And the Weasley sweater, which is the most fun, I think. I want to make that for myself. So I just... Um, looked around a little bit and I have to say oh, oh fluffy super cute um, I don't see myself knitting like a head week it is stunning I have to say maybe maybe if I have children for like in the room maybe and they have uh, like the Weasley sweater, as I said, but that's knitted flat in four different panels and you can sew that together. And that's not my preference for knitting a sweater. So maybe I will use like the, the leather chart and uh, maybe like put it on the Monday sweater or something. Um, they have the scarves from all the houses, of course. They even have inspired by... Um, 
Professor Umbridge, like some sort of scarf thing. Who wears that? But it's fun to have. Oh, this is beautiful. I like the bow pattern uh, girls. So yeah, for me this is fun to have. Don't know if I will make something out of this soon. But as a Harry Potter geek, I like this. So yeah, my um, actually this is my first. Now it's not my first knitting book. I showed you some uh, sock knitting books previously, but that feels different than this. And then finally, we're uh, to some new yarn. Firstly, um, I've been to the sale at my local yarn store. Did you know that already? I go there like every two weeks, I believe, because it's so close by and it's so tempting. And I'm so addicted to buying yarn at the moment. So uh, like the yarn from uh, Oslo Hat, um, the, the mittens, the weekend hat pen, the blue one was new. Um, and I bought this and this is lane yarns alpaca super light and i was inspired by femke from the mindful creators because she was there and she saw this yarn in and she bought it in different colors other colors and um, this is let's see 54% alpaca then you have 24% nylon and 22% wool so it's Alpaca nylon and wool, and it feels like a mohair substitute because 25 grams is 199 meters. So it's a little bit thicker than mohair, but not that much thicker as brushed alpaca, which I usually go for like a, a mohair substitute. But that's so much thicker that it's uh, hard to get uh, the right gauge. This feels quite soft. And I think it was my previous podcast that I showed you this yarn, this Cool Rule Big by Lana Grossa. And look at how well this matches. So they had in sale still some skeins left of this one, so I can't, could see it in the store. And this is like almost the same color. And I already bought these in the sale. Yeah, for, for a sweater for next winter. Don't know, um, don't want to cast on anytime soon. Just next winter. I don't know yet if I want to make something like plain, plain stockinette stitch. Or maybe a v-neck sweater. Like the uh, Harlow sweater v-neck from Kadri, maybe. Or that I want to make a textured knit. Because I have seen a picture of uh, someone making a structure loop. Is it a structure loop? No, the twist loop sweater from other loops in this sort of color. And it's stunning. So don't know yet, but uh, now I have a merino. It is super rush and a mohair substitute. This, so I think this will be super soft and a little bit more textured. So this is the first one. And then lastly, In a previous podcast, I mentioned that I um, knitted something for a webshop, a Dutch small business that sells yarn and uh, already knitted sweaters and cardigans. And I signed up to be to knit something for them. And in exchange, I, uh, I got some yarn. I got to choose some yarn from the webshop. Maybe I'll do it again um, in the future. But right now I'm uh, saturated with enough projects. But I finally made a decision. Um, and it was really hard to be honest. And I think I mentioned that in a previous podcast. But um, the, the, this web shop is um, all about bright colors. And that's really fun. Like super bright colors. And... This falls in that category, although it's way more neon than in real life. Neon on screen. Um, but I couldn't see myself making a garment with the yarn that I saw. So I had a really hard time uh, choosing th something. 
So eventually I chose sock yarn because I thought, well, hey, at least I can make socks with them. And I didn't have experience with this yarn and I wanted to feel like how uh, soft it was. And I'm glad to say it's really soft and it's really beautiful. So I got three skeins. The brand, firstly, NYP Z. Don't know how to pronounce this, but it's a Dutch small business. Um, this is hand dyed yarn. So she dyed it when I ordered it from her. This sock yarn is 75% uh, uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon. 100 grams is 425 meters, two ply, and a high twist. So, as you can see, it is twisted. This is the most neutral color they had, so that's why I chose it. And I like the pink and the little bit of purple it has in here. And it's stunning and it's really soft. Um, the sock yarn from Wol met Verve I bought at the uh, Handwerkbeurs, the Crafts Fair, is um, really a lot tougher. It's, it's a lot more sturdy, so it feels like that yarn is better for socks. And I bought two pink skeins for a top. And I will still make that, but this is so much softer. And I just love the colors. So I don't know if I'm going to make socks with this. Probably not. So I've got this one. This color is Brown Love. Then I got a confetti one. This is confetti gray, the color. And I was inspired by Laura from Penrose Knits, who made uh, a confetti Monday sweater for her daughter. And it was so cute. Look at the neon pink, neon yellow. Um, so yeah, this, this inspires me somehow. I don't know how this will knit up, though. I'm quite curious. But it feels like a shame to make socks with this. And then lastly, I have the color Ibiza. Ibiza. Just look at the neon pink, the orange, the bright blues, the purple, lavender. It's stunning. So now I feel like I can't make socks with these. I want to make summer tops. Like I needed more yarn for summer tops. Definitely not. Um, I have seen like this white color here is um, really similar to a skein I have. A drops Flora is the same thickness. It almost looks the same and is white. So I'm thinking I will make like uh, a camisole. Don't know how I, uh, what neckline, but I can make the, uh, the ribbing and the bands with flora, just in plain white, for example, and then a body with this. That's what I'm thinking with this. I don't know how this will knit up because it feels like the yarn is like squished together and then dyed in, in like all these different areas. And it feels different than the other hand height yarn that I had, like this one. This is, oh yeah, much more subtle than this, obviously, because of the colors. But I need to wind this up, make a swatch, because I have no idea how this looks. But I'm really intrigued. Um, it would be easy to... Uh, Take some mohair with it to uh, subdue it a little bit, but no, no mohair, just this. Maybe I can make just a fun bra bralette or something. And with this as well, although the brown really doesn't suit me. And this is pink, not that much, but it fits the top like a little bit lower palette. I like this. So yeah, check out the website. If you like bright colors, then it's really something for you. But I'm really happy I have these and maybe I will knit something again for them so I can pick some new, more beautiful yarn. That's what I wanted to say. So yeah, I've got a mess around me, a lot of yarn. Uh -huh. I talked a lot and I hope you liked it. I had a lot of my... Uh, 
I had so much fun knitting all this. I had so much fun talking about this. Thank you so much for listening. If you're still listening, and subscribe, leave a comment. I don't comment very fast. I know that it's just um, uploading. It's like filming is really fun. Editing, not so much. So I usually put that off and I probably will edit this in like a week or a week or two and then upload it. And then I forget about it. I just sometimes look like is somebody watching this. And yeah, there are lots of you who are watching this and it's so much fun. But it has to get in my system to react a little bit more. But I still appreciate everyone uh, commenting or liking or watching. So thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.